Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Kansas sues Pfizer. What could that be about? Frozen Biden. And uh, there is no crime, only white supremacy. Welcome back to all my little sig tigs. What do we got today? Boom. Kansas steps up and sues Pfizer over quote unquote misrepresentations and quote unquote adverse events of the C-19V. Kansas AG Chris Kobach alleges Pfizer violated the state's Consumer Protection Act. Okay, well, this is all legal stuff here, so uh, let's get that straight. The state of Kansas had filed a lawsuit against pharmaceutical company Pfizer Incorporated for alleged consumer protection violations related to the company's manufacturing of the C-19V, saying the company marketed the shot as safe even though it knew, quote-unquote, the vaccine was connected to serious adverse events. Now again, this is alleged. Uh, Pfizer misled the public that it had a safe and effective C-19V the 69-page lawsuit filed Monday in the District Court of Thomas County alleges, let's get that straight, just allegations at the, t at the current time, nothing's been proven. Pfizer said its COVID-19 vaccine was safe even though it knew its COVID-19 vaccine was connected to serious adverse events including myocarditis and pericarditis, failed pregnancies and deaths. Pfizer concealed this critical safety information from the public, quote-unquote, the suit alleges. Pfizer said its COVID-19 vaccine was effective even though it knew its COVID-19 vaccine waned over time and did not protect against COVID-19 variants. Pfizer concealed this critical effectiveness information from the public, it says. So again, this is all alleged within the case filed by in Kansas or by Kansas, the state of Kansas. So not a person, but the actual state of Kansas is suing the pharmaceutical company Pfizer. The lawsuit alleges the company's actions and statements relating to its C-19V violated the Kansas Consumer Protection Act, regardless of whether any individual consumer ultimately received it or not. Pfizer must be held accountable for falsely representing the benefits of the vaccine while concealing and suppressing the truth about its safety risks, waning effectiveness, and inability to prevent transmission, the lawsuit says. So I'm not sure exactly what this has to do with. Perhaps it's the fact that uh, their uh, trial information, the clinical trials that they had conducted prior to, uh, they wanted to uh, have that released over 75 years or wait 75 years. I don't know. You can go ahead and dig a little deeper on that if you wish. The suit filed by the Republican attorney, General Chris Kobach, alleges that though or sorry, through the company's misrepresentations, it earned record revenue of approximately $75 billion in just two years. Okay. The lawsuit alleges that millions of Kansans heard the misrepresentations about its uh, shot. For example, Pfizer administered 3,355,518 doses in Kansas as of February 7th, 2024. This is accounted for more than 60% of all doses in Kansas. The lawsuit alleges citing the State Department's health data. The lawsuit alleges that word constantly coming up. So also uh, YouTube, if you're listening, it's all alleged within a lawsuit. This is not a personal opinion. This is just reading, okay? Pfizer used various methods to conceal critical data related to the safety and effectiveness, including using confidential agreements extended timeline, uh, destroying the control group participating in its trial, allegedly. Uh, well, because they unblinded the original control group and allowed them to receive the shot, uh, Pfizer, government regulators, and independent scientists cannot fully compare the safety and efficacy of the uh, shot against 
unvaccinated individuals. Well, sure, there's a lot of people in the public during the actual clinical trials while it was emergency use that they can compare it to if they're ever willing to come forward. The extensive and aggressive efforts to keep the information hidden conflict with its public transparency pledges and raises serious questions about what they uh, are hiding or why they would be hiding it, allegedly. It also uh, alleges that they failed to disclose the limitations of the actual trials itself. So we'll keep you posted on that. Again, it's just news that's being reported, and we're reporting on that news YouTube. Okay, no personal opinions about it. Anyway, moving right along. McDonald's back in the news to end AI drive through experiment after errant orders, including bacon on ice cream and a $222 McNuggets bill. Okay, McDonald's reportedly planning to end its artificial intelligence-powered automated drive through order taking experiment in more than 100 locations after angry customers reported receiving items they didn't order. The gaffes, including adding nine sweet teas to one customer's order and giving another customer an ice cream cone topped with bacon. The Chicago-based fast food chain and IBM partnered on the pilot program two years ago at select franchises yeah so there you go it's not working out we're just not there yet okay ai has been invented or whatever they're still uh sculpting that statue all right we got a statue right here uh biden's getting closer to putting cups in jello bowls what is he yelling here no one has any idea well let's zoom in and uh, you guys have a listen let me know in the comments what you think sure if he's like taking the piss and he's just like oh, i'm not worried about it like repeating what the reporter or journalist was attempting to ask and then looked at his hand there and was like haha that's funny because i mean sometimes old people just look older or look like they're not all there just because they look old and it's just like a perception in your mind and maybe he's just having a laugh there can't say was weird though and uh let's see what else is going on these people have something funny to say. Folk at a DC pro-Palestinian rally are thinking, surely even this lot will not make excuses for rape, torture and slaughter of innocent Israelis on October 7. Can you guys tell me a little bit about your goal here today? As queer people, we have a duty to show up here and stand in solidarity with all of the other marginalized communities. All this kind of started October 7th, so what do you have to say about October 7th and the actions of Hamas? I think definitely the protest started October 7th, but like this issue did not start October 7th. I guess October 7th, they like did something. They came out of like trying to like fight back, you know, because you know they've been oppressed for so many years. Hamas is a reaction. It's not a problem hamas is the result of the situation should other young people out there should they come out and protest and show their support for hamas um i think they should and your sign says from the river to the sea palestine will be free yeah. um can you tell me which river and which sea we're talking about here <laughs> I, this is a, a you, you caught me on the spot and i'm really horrible oh, when, yeah, when okay. asking questions not but basically the river and the sea that that border both sides of palestine where israel is right now yeah, and here are more college kids who are frightfully stupid. Enjoy. Did you guys see that Al Qaeda just thanked you guys? They thanked all the college protesters and everything. Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas. Does that make you happy? Uh huh. Yeah. Of course, we're supportive. It makes you feel like it was actually some kind of hole. for a hundred bucks. Who was the terrorist group behind 9/11? No clue. ISIS. Mm. Al Qaeda. But you think that 9/11 had some justification? Good in some ways. Uh, can you guys find Gaza on a map? I think we need a better map. Can't find it. No. Who is the number one sponsor of global terrorists in America? I think the U.S. New York. Mm -hmm. New York's a state. That's Zach Sage. Yeah, so there you have it, people. Like, the people who are supporting this stuff are absolute morons, and that's all there is to it. 
All right, what do we got here? Doctors reveal condition uh, could be behind Biden's bizarre freezing episodes after 81-year-old has second statue moment in one week. Well, what could it be? His advanced age is a major sore point heading into the upcoming election, and the 81-year-old's recent spat of public gaffes are raising more concerns. Both experts and voters have voiced concerns over Biden's series of odd freezing incidents over the past week. Most recently, the president's face and body appeared to freeze on stage at a fundraiser in Los Angeles. Biden stopped moving after his speech, staring blankly over the crowd for several seconds. But a White House representative dismissed reports of a frozen reaction to DailyMail.com as fakes and lies. Cheap fakes. It's not, not deep fakes. It's like the play on words uh, KJP is throwing out there. Uh, explaining his reaction was simply taking in an applauding crowd for a few seconds. And they're trying to be like, okay, well, this is just dirty politics, what the Republicans are doing. How dare they point out these things? Like, what kind of sick and disgusting, twisted individuals do we have over there on the right? The episode comes less than a week after POTUS seemed to also freeze at the Juneteenth White House celebration during a concert featuring gospel singer Kirk Franklin. Yeah, we covered that. He was seen staring blankly ahead as Vice President Kamala danced beside him in a speech at the event. He also seemed to slur his words. Yeah, and here he was with um, former President Obama. Also, yesterday we covered him there uh, with the helicopter pilots, and apparently they said he just went over giving the thumbs up, and Georgia Melonia, Maloney, whatever her name is, said, uh, yeah, hey, Joe, come we're over here taking a picture, which I mean, like, they're making it worse than it is. Freezing on stage with Barack sparks heated debate. Yeah, of course, everyone's like, what's going on? Are they going to remove this guy? Probably. A lot of people are saying that he's got about a month left. They're not going to let him get to the debates. They're going to they're gonna prep uh, Gavin Newsom. And maybe uh, I also heard they were going to let him go and then replace Kamala with Hillary Clinton. What do you think of that? And then she slides in with the old, uh, he's too old to keep going. Who knows? We'll see. I mean, we'll talk about dirty politics. There's an image of him. Like, he just looks like, you know, uh, Clint Eastwood in that movie when he was super angry. And Biden just looks interested. I mean, uh, sorry, Barack. He just, like, he looks chill and cool. He's on the go. And Biden looks like he's holding one in hard. Like, big time. Anyway. What's the deal? What do they say? Why does... And they're trying to say that, like, Trump is, like, losing his mind. It's weird. Biden's not fit to serve. He belongs in a rest home. But do they have an excuse? I thought that's what this was all about. Right-wing media is becoming so desperate, they're just making up fake stories out of thin air. Okay, so maybe that's what they're saying. They're just saying it's all fake. That's the excuse. They slam the viral video, defending the president, just taking and applauding the crowd for a few seconds. Nothing more. Oh, it's no big deal. There's an image of him when he was younger. Yeah, okay. Uh, Palestinian flags. Whatever. So, he's plagued. Canada, what's going on up here? Environmental racism. Well, don't worry about that. Canadian government has gone ahead and got a bill passed some legislation to tackle all that racism that's coming from the environment. Green Party leader celebrates Elizabeth May prepares to tackle environmental racism with this new bill. She's thrilled that her bill that seeks to tackle environmental racism has passed. And there she is. She just recently read through... Uh... Yeah. So she just recently read through the... Um document okay she has security clearance and she was like oh yeah there's nothing to worry about with the uh, regards to chinese interference it's totally fine no everything's fine and then uh she's behind the environmental justice environmental racism bill it's cleared its final step and uh yeah okay, apparently we don't have access to this i wonder if we can get access perhaps
All right, then. Here we go. We have some sort of access to it. Speaking in the House Commons, May flaunted her private member's bill confronting environmental justice and environmental racism, knowing the legislation has cleared its final step and now merely pending royal assent. And that's when they basically put it into law. May also said that Canada has been facing environmental racism for decades and that she's extremely pleased to provide security for minority groups and people of color. She further said the bill creates an obligation for the Minister of Climate Change, Stephen Gilbo, to bring forward a national strategy to confront the racist weather. Taking action is now required of the minister, but the bill couldn't dictate exactly what kinds of action we will take. There's a lot more work to do, May commented. Some Canadians are expressing confusion over what environmental racism is, calling May's speech absurd and a distraction from genuine concerns. Elizabeth May says it's not enough to say we're in a climate crisis. We have to do more to deal with one of its biggest threats, environmental racism. She says her law will give governments more tools to deal with environmental racism in Canada. The country becomes more... So Donna chimes in. She's like, tell me what the f is environmental racism and what does this relate to having traitors in our government? Yeah, because she read the report and said, no big deal, nothing. Liberal Minister Gilbo, who supports the legislation, said in March this legislation recognizes the need to rectify the disproportionate environmental burdens faced by certain communities, especially black, indigenous, and other racialized groups. It's like, what do you mean? Like, I don't even understand what that means. Like, can it be specific? Like, can I guess? Like, is it not, is it access to unclean water because they live outside of a municipality? Because the municipality should be able to provide clean water. If it's not that, then uh, what is it? Is it living close, like, our, our poor people live closer to, like, a dump? Landfill, perhaps? What is it? Do they not have air conditioners? Like, is that, like, the problem? Like, I really don't know what it is that's disproportionate. So what will it change? It'll mandate a national strategy to dismantle the disproportionate impacts climate change has on people of color, which, according to the Green Party, causes racial discrimination and disadvantages. The legislation could amend federal laws to increase the involvement of marginalized communities in policy making regarding climate change, as well as provide compensation to the minority groups impacted and collect data on health outcomes associated with global warming. So it sounds like they're just going to be paying these groups money to come up with these studies and reports to talk about it. Sounds like a super huge waste of money. Concrete steps. There's nothing there. It's absolutely nothing. They haven't figured it out yet, but it passed. Good job, Canada. Oregon track and field coach fired after asking state officials to protect single-sex sports. What? What's that mean? Well, that's something now. Single-sex sports, like boys' sports and girls' sports and, and transgender people, individuals trying to... Uh, become part of those sports and typically you know if a transgender man wants to join boy sports it's not a big news headline but when a transgender woman joins a woman's sports it can be because men are physically different than women newsflash the head track and field coach at high school in Oregon has been fired after writing letters to state officials expressing his concerns about allowing biological males to complete with girls. John Parks, who had been employed at the Lake Oswego High School since January of last year, says his contract was terminated shortly after he had been speaking out against trans-identified males, self-identifying into female races. Yeah, so they're not going to the doctor, or they're not on testosterone uh, reduction therapy. What's going on? They're just saying, hey, listen, I'm a female now and I want to run. Parks explains that he first wrote the Oregon Student Activities Association with his concerns just before the controversial May 18th state championship where a trans-identified male student participated with the girls. The student, Aiden Gallagher, had been the source of much outcry after dominating a number of races in the qualifying matches leading up to the state championship. In April, Gallagher won multiple awards in girls' varsity races, but he finally secured his place at state on May 9th, when he took two gold medals at the Portland Interscholastic League meet, Gallagher ultimately seized first place in the girls' varsity 200 meter and championship and was booed upon taking the winner's podium. Yeah, I believe we covered this. Uh, following the championship, Parks wrote another letter, this time to Oregon Senator Rob Wagner. In the letter, Parks argued current Oregon law, which allows males to self-identify to women's sports, was creating unfair playing field for female athletes. Absolutely. If you can just self-identify, then... 
I mean, I think it happened in Alberta, Canada as well. Uh, this yoked out dude just walks into a female weightlifting competition and he says, and I believe he even has a beard and like just a tank top. And he's like, yeah, I'm registering. My name is Joanne or whatever. And they're like, okay. And he just goes and just like, there's the record. No problem. Just wrecks it. And I think he might even have did his max. So like the record will stand forever. All right, so his proposal was to encourage transgender participation and offer an open division. I think that's a great idea. Uh, that is so named so it doesn't identify or discriminate but offers an opportunity to participate. Yeah, but then we still, but I'm a woman. I feel like a woman. I should be allowed to do what women do. But no, it's not like that. It's not like that. You can't just say that it's what you want and get it. Or else people would be saying what they want and getting it as well. And it doesn't work like that for anybody. <clears throat> anyway, he also noted that mixed sex competitions were becoming an issue for the trans athletes as well. Pouring that Gallagher had been booed by the crowd. <clears throat> I want them to be able to participate where they're not booed, he says in the process of appealing his termination. I'm going to fight now because I got wronged. I am fighting for girls, I'm fighting for female sports, I'm fighting for that to be fair for everybody. Yeah, good for you, and you absolutely should. There should be an open league or even a trans league that's just for them. And then one for all. Oh, just like open weight. Who's the best? Well, size matters. Look at boxing. There's a championship at like every five pound limit. I have six belts. Whoa, what weight? 150 to 175. Right? Like 25 pounds. Open weight. You have like a 155 pound guy fight a 265 pound guy. Does that sound fair? Perhaps not. All right. Millions more given to build tiny nuclear reactors in Wyoming. So here's the new project, the new future. I'm not going to dive too far into this, but what's a nuclear reactor? They'll take like uh, some enriched uranium and put it in water and it causes it to boil. And that steam then is used to spin a turbine that creates electricity. It's classic. It's what we do. Turbines. That's how we get our electricity. And they're just saying, hey, man, maybe we just build a bunch of small ones and... Uh, that could power the cities and towns. Nuclear is the cleanest form of energy and most efficient, even though people still talk about Chernobyl oh, and uh, Fukushima. Well, Japan never should have built it on the coast, at least the east coast. All right, moving right along. What do we got here? Another migrant. Okay, bad news for this guy. Check it out. He faced street justice when residents of this Corona neighborhood recognized him from this wanted poster. They knew he was a regular at this bodega, so they all got together and waited. He will come to the store, buy his snacks and everything. Late Monday night, Christian Giovanni Ingalandi's bodega run resulted in a beatdown. He's right there. Look at him right there. We're he got on him first and started hitting him. Girl that recorded was hitting him. He had him down. We all just basically retaliated for the 13 year little girl because it's not right what he did to her. Daniel Ramos tells Pix11 News it was all hands on deck. Six to ten of his friends sprung into action when they saw Londi. They say yeah, they confirmed that's right. it was him by pulling off his shirt. That's when they saw the distinctive tattoo on his chest. Outnumbered and taking a beating, first the 25 year old migrant from Ecuador tried to run. But Jeffrey Flores had other plans. I got the belt and I um, tied his feet, and that's it. Well, you said you tied his feet with the belt. Uh -huh. Was he saying yeah. anything when you guys grabbed him? He was just trying to say, like, he could explain, he could explain. We wasn't trying to hear you explain nothing. During a news. <laughs> and that's the way it should be, and it's probably going to become that. And maybe this lawless society that's happening with all these migrants is going to bring in more regulation, more surveillance more of a police state perhaps like china and then you'll have a social credit score so you don't have to worry about any of this crime anymore just go ahead and download your state approved app and uh yeah go for it all right what else do we got trans identified male who exposed his breast at the white house now accused of sexually assaulting another transgender person yeah okay so there you go picture with biden nice selfie so they received criticism for exposing their augmented breasts at the White House during a Pride event last June. Absolutely, like have some respect. 
they've now been accused of sexual assault. Well, escalating. The alleged victim is a biological female who identifies as a man. Rose Montoya, 28, was subsequently banned from attending any future events at the White House. Congratulations. After a video went viral showing him groping his fake breasts while topless at the South Lawn, Montoya shared the video to his own TikTok account and quickly gathered attention. Sure, we won't give it any more. Uh, after a groundswell of outrage, Montoya condemned by White House Press Secretary KJP, the behavior was simply unacceptable. It was unfair to hundreds of attendees who were there to celebrate their families. Yeah, it's disgusting display. It's demonic. Who does that? Simply living my joy and my truth and existing in my body. Free the nipple, he said. There you go. Well, if it is a man, what's wrong? I mean, is there men walking around the White House? It's inappropriate to have your shirt off, man or woman, at the White House, I'm sure. Anyway... <laughs> <clears throat> this is where we are. There's a concerted effort to make people afraid of crime, Moriarty claims. All right, so here we have. This is the only crimes. White supremacy. It's ingrained everywhere, she says. White supremacy is what we all live in. It's the water. Okay, so here it is. There she is, I believe. Better be careful here. Mary, okay. Mary. It's a female name, I believe. During May 28th event, Hennepin County Attorney Mary Moriarty explains she believes there's an effort to cause the public to fear crime. Moderate Democrats have done a lot of work in making people afraid of downtown Minneapolis, she said. There's a concerted effort to make people afraid of crime. The conversation took place between Moriarty and Dr. T. Anasi Wilson, a Mitchell Hamlin School of Law professor. The discussion centered around being good trouble and activism. White supremacy is ingrained everywhere. White supremacy is what we all live in. It's the water. It's it's what we swim in here, she said. All right. Wilson agreed and took it a step further, explaining his belief that white supremacy is embedded in all public policy, including the Constitution. We have to think about the Constitution as the living will of the white supremacist. Slave-owning, genocidal, xenophobic, sexist, homophobic, cis, heterosexist, capitalistic, classic maniacs, Right? Wilson said Moriarty, a white lesbian woman, was elected to serve as Hennepin County attorney in 2022. Her campaign included progressive approaches to criminal justice, such as restorative justice programs and alternatives to incarceration. Crime is down, Moriarty said repeatedly throughout the conversation. Crime is down. Well, yeah, if there's alternatives to incarceration and restorative justice programs, people probably aren't being convicted of crimes. So stats would automatically not... Uh, show crime she also discussed her advice for current law students which was to ask more questions you talk about the rule of law it's like what is that <clears throat> i mean i kind of wonder how anybody <clears throat> talks about the rule of law now wasn't roe v wade rule of law i mean what happened to that moriarty said yes you can moriarty replied when asked if the public can expect her to seek re-election she explained that her office has been involved in a lot of good work, including expungement clinics and reevaluating sentences of individuals who are incarcerated. There's so many people we haven't charged on aiding and abetting. The office used to charge people who were there with aiding and abetting. We don't do that anymore. She also pushed back on the notion that she harbors any anti-police bias. I have nothing against law enforcement. I want everybody to be held accountable. That doesn't mean punished, by the way, but accountability is important. Sometimes that's restorative practices. Most of the time it should be restorative practices, yeah. Let's keep those crime stats down. This is She's like, this is great. I'm the greatest attorney of all time. However, police demonstrate fragility to any kind of feedback or criticism, she said. Days after the interview, uh, Moriarty's office dropped charges against a state trooper, for a fatal use of force incident last year, setting her office inability to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the crime occurred. And there it is. There's the other side. We can't prove it. And if we could, just go ahead and be a good little boy and don't do it again. There you have it, people. Sigma Tiger signing out.